You are Locked On Hawks, your daily Atlanta Hawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, it is it's good to see everyone. Not sure why you're here. You should be up to 75 right now for the doubleheader. That's where the real action is. <clears throat> but um, it's exciting to be back. It's good to be back. Uh, there's been a lot of energy in our gym with OTAs, and it's been fun to see guys all participate in that and, uh, and show up and, and see how, you know, we've, we've made some moves here, um, and I do believe we've, we've made progress as, as it relates to our brand of basketball, which I speak, at at length, speak out at length about. And for us, that's, that's really what's most important. Um, we have, we have goals, we have long-term goals, but for us, what we can control are the everyday actions that, uh, that make us who we are, you know, playing unselfish basketball, playing with the pass, um, making sure that we're connected out there. Those are very important to us. And, um, you know, this summer, this off season and watching how guys have worked and seeing how hard our coaches have worked at it and their preparation for camp this week um, has me believe we've taken a step in that, but there's more work to do. Uh, we're not a finished product, uh, product. We are a work in progress right now. And um, I'm really excited, though, about, about this group and uh, looking forward to what this week holds, and we're ready to jump in. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have. You touched on it a little bit, but I was curious how confident you feel the work that you did do this summer has kind of helped to set you on a path and where you feel the plan is that you guys have to building a championship contender. Yeah, I, I really believe it. Um, the group from our staff to our coaches, you know, they've worked tirelessly this summer. Uh, you know, going back to some moves that we made to, you know, even in the draft, really addressing some things that for us were really important to hit on going into this season and adding more of uh, the characteristics that we believe in time will net us those big results that we want. Um, but as I said, it, the focus is really about what can we control and what we can control right now is the next best action um, on the court, off the court, and making sure we're as connected as possible. <clears throat> as you guys head into training camp uh, over this next week or so and with preseason right around the corner and such, uh, what are your current expectations for the team, maybe for Coach Quinn and for the roster that's currently constructed? Really, it's about progress. Um, you're probably sick of me saying that, but it really is about that. You know, there is a style of play that for us is within our control, and it's something that we – we harp on and we practice and we make sure that the individuals that we're bringing into the franchise already fit to a certain degree and they're already practicing those specific elements. Um, there is a core characteristic that we're looking for with this group and for us the expectation is get out there, continue to make progress in practicing that. The daily habits are very important to us. Um, and for us the belief is if you do that over a good span of time, all the, all the big goals that we have, you know, we'll accomplish. You mentioned a minute ago, uh, you feel like you addressed some things with the offseason moves. What is it that you feel like you addressed? Yeah. Well, we wanted to make sure that we had guys that, you know, if you're, if you're watching them play, um, what do they do when the ball is not in their hands? Something that's very important for us. You know, making sure that there's still movement, and that's on both sides of the ball. And, you know, defensively, I think we needed to upgrade a little bit as well. And um, that was something that we, we wanted to go into the offseason looking to address. You know, had the number one pick and feel great about Zach and his progress and how he attacks his everyday work. You know, he's already been a pro for some time. So um, it's good to see where he's at and good to see, like, at 19 where he ultimately could go. And we're very thrilled so far of what we've seen. And, you know, I think his ceiling is, is unbelievably high. Last season, the idea of size came up a lot in terms of just depth and how many people went down in the front court and injuries. But I'm curious how you felt you addressed that this offseason as well. Yeah, the depth is huge. Uh, last year with injuries, you could see how that plays out. I think we have a lot of depth this year. There's a lot of guys that can play. Um, you know, there'll be some challenging decisions that have to make when it comes to lineups. Wanted to definitely address some sizing stuff as well, um, get bigger at the wing. 
And uh, I think we did that. And I think we have guys that, especially as, it, as we look at sort of the spectrum of wings between, you know, the typical two through four, you know, it's kind of an interchangeable play that we have. Um, and I thought that, you know, from the things that we've done, we addressed that. It was a busy offseason for the Hawks with the Murray trade and the number one overall pick. Um, but it's all in the rear view now. Just curious, what do you think you learned most from this offseason and what excites you the most about this new team? Looking kind of at OTAs and watching how this group gels, um, not just from a personality standpoint, but really in how they play is what most excites me because that's what I've been talking to you all about <laughs> uh, a ton. And that's, that's where we have a belief that that's a cultural thing. And the, how you play is a cultural thing. Um, so it's exciting to see what these guys are doing, the versatility that they show. What are they doing when the ball is not in their hands, as I mentioned earlier, is, is really important. Um, and I like the effectiveness that we see so far uh, going into training camp. There will be some things that we you know, have to clean up, some things that I know uh, Coach and his staff have been working really hard on. Um, but I like the progress we've made, but we, we have more to do for sure. Hello, Landry. Uh, David Lee with the uh, Afro. I wanted to follow up on a question that Lauren asked about size. So since your takeover as the lead GM, there's been an increase in the positional size, versatility, and length across the roster. Um, I'm curious, when it comes to a player like Dyson Daniels, he's a little bit more tangible impact. He's played a sizable amount in the NBA. But when you're evaluating someone like Dominic Barlow or David Roddy, who doesn't have that same sample size, how do you evaluate those players and see how they fit in with the Hawks uh, going forward? You evaluate them. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a quantity thing. You know, you're, it's not just you see them once or twice. Like, it is a full range of evaluation and scouting that you do. Um, you know, you brought up David Roddy, who, you know, we made that deal this summer, uh, who we identified, you know, throughout time. And then the summer league, we were really pleased with his play and progression and some of the strides that he made on the court. So looking at more of our brand, we saw him and, and kind of dating back to even when he was at Colorado State, the things that he could do, which he's not necessarily shown too much uh, in the NBA, we feel like, hey, that, that really fits. Can we unearth some of that that we saw before he even got to this level? Um, and so that's exciting. And those are, he's a guy that watching how he's played the last few weeks has been fun to see because you start to see like, oh, there's some things that he can do with the pass and the toughness that he brings. He's a great voice as well. Uh, and he works his tail off. So um, that's been really good for us. Dyson, you know, incredible defender, continuing to evolve in his offensive game. You know, watching him from McKnight to where he's at now, you know he has those play that playmaking ability and the versatility that he shows. And when he doesn't have the ball, he's still effective out there. Um, and another key character that, that fits our group and our ethos. So both those guys have been great so far. Hey, Landry. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously Kobe Bufkin, Mo Gay, and Seth, they were dealing with those injuries. Just what have you seen from them, and like, what do you expect from them this upcoming season? Yeah, the injuries, they've been tough. Um, Kobe's was like at the worst time. You know, we were excited to see what he was going to do this in summer league, uh, continue to advance him personally and then for us as well. But he's back to full health. Mo is back to full health. These guys have been in the gym all summer. Uh, Seth is, is, is almost back on Yeku, who was also an injury. Like, he's made some strides right now. There's been no setbacks with any of those guys. Uh, and it's just good to see. It's good to see how they've grown closer together as well, um, you know, coming in last year at the same time, uh, not just on the court but off the court. So those guys, you know, we have a lot of hopes for. Um, we know that for them there's still more work to be done. But from what they're showing us right now and things that, you know, we hope to project out, I think that they're going to be just fine. But they're workers at the end of the day, and they're smart. Thank you. So when going into the offseason with critical decisions like this past one, how did you balance sticking to a plan while also being opportunistic? Uh, which past one? I'm sorry. Just so, uh, so this off, this offseason, obviously with the the Murray trade and other decisions, how did you balance like a plan going in, but while also like being opportunistic with something that came up? Right. Got it. Um, you know, we've created definition and guidelines and guardrails. I would say to what we want to build with and what we don't want to build with. Um, and you know, looking at how we've addressed some things. Um, 
you know, it kind of focuses in on certain characteristics for us uh, as it relates to how players play. And looking at the market this, this summer, you know, I think we, we took advantage in areas that we could. And we also knew that there were some things that we weren't going to do just simply because it didn't fit us. It doesn't fit who we are and what we want to build into. Um, and, you know, that's always a balance, as you say. We've, we've got things that we want to do that we know will help make progress. Um, the timing on that and we, we'd start to see results that we want is remain, you know, remains to be seen. But uh, I know for our group, it is a focus, especially in a new cap environment where you have to be very diligent um, and mindful of how you're building out rosters, not just this year, but the next two, three, four years um, is critical. And, you know, we don't want to just have a bloom and then it fizzle out. Like, we want to be in a position where we have that and can have a level of sustainability. And that takes a lot of creativity uh, and a lot of work and planning for that. So, Kind of piggybacking off of that, um, we just saw a pretty big trade in the NBA just a few days ago. Uh, with it coming right up on training camp, do you like to have your roster set by training camp, or are you still willing to, to listen to offers and see what's out there? I would always still listen. I think that there's opportunities that um, could still be had. It's you know, ideally not the best because you're starting to make progress in preparation for training camps. But until we're at a spot where I feel like, hey, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a really good place, like, I'll listen. But there's also the balance of knowing how the team has come together the weeks prior and some things that you project out because you don't want to put our coaching staff and players in a tough position um, you know, with anything, and that's no knock to what they do. They got to do what's best for them. But for us, uh, those are things that we're always going to weigh and making sure that the fabric of the group is still strong going into the season, even if we don't believe we're where we need to be yet. But we will definitely listen. Um, it's part of my job to make sure that we're always growing. Landry, uh, how do you envision Cody Zeller's role, uh, part of that trade? And obviously have a lot of front court depth. So what do you see from him on this roster? Yeah, it's, it's still an evaluation right now as it relates to our roster and how that's going to shape up going into training camp. You know, we're in you know, talks with his camp, just kind of see what that's going to look like for the future. Hey, Landry, um, last year you guys brought in Patty Mills and Wes Matthews to be like solid veteran presences and vocal leaders. But during this offseason, Trey has taken a lot of steps to uh, uh, leadership and to train and welcome some of the newer and young players. So what sort of confidence does that give you that Trey has taken that next step as a leader? I'm, I'm really thrilled with, with Trey this offseason. And the steps that he has taken in his leadership um, and things that he's been working on and you know the level of partnership that we have with him. And I'm excited for him. I think that this year for him is going to be one of his best. And I don't even mean that from a statistical standpoint. Like, He's a fantastic player. The stats are going to be what they are because of who he is and the skill level that he has. But when I mean best, I mean exactly what you've identified and things that we've seen too and things that we're more in partnership with now. And um, just making sure that, you know, hey, this is like, the better players on this team. So uh, it doesn't all come down to you. Like he understands like it's a collective and that's part of who we are as well, understanding that, uh, you know, the whole is something that we're always focused on, but watching him um, take those steps and practice those, you know, I couldn't be more thrilled for him. We're really excited. I'm really excited for him uh, and how he's going to impact our group this year. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, Landry, I was curious about Clint and him heading into the final year of his contract with you guys, and how do you envision his future, and, and what would you like to see out of him this coming season? Clint's a worker. He's worked this season. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're well aware of con contract statuses with all of our guys. And the focus right now for us and for him, frankly, is just to, like, be as good as he can, start a training camp and beyond. Um, you know, we have a lot of depth at our front court, which, um, which is a really good thing. You need, you need every position, but you definitely need that position here in the NBA. And, you know, watching him work and attack every day has been good. And, you know, when we get to, you know, contracts and all that stuff, we'll get there. But right now the focus is to start a training camp. Like, it's going to be great this year. 
Hey, Landry. Um, I wanted to go back to about Zach. Um, I know you guys talked about it a little bit after the draft, obviously, what led you to that pick. Um, just a kind of a refresher for the fans on what to expect with him as a player and what vision you guys have for him. And also just a little bit um, kind of inside the NBA. Does a franchise drafting someone from a foreign country, do you guys have plans to kind of acclimate him, you know, getting him used to the city of Atlanta? I know he's been going with Trey a lot of places. Just kind of wanted to see what that process was like. So I'm going to intertwine kind of what you said because it, you almost answered your own question for us at least. Uh, yes, the expectation for him is to come in and absorb. Um, it's, a, it's a new country <laughs> uh, and, you know, you know, speaks the language very well, you know, but that's still going to be a thing in, in terms of how things are getting translated. But he's fantastic. Like the expectation for him is to get in, do your work, you know, whatever opportunities you have, make the most of them. Um, he's a fantastic player now, and we're only more and more excited about his ceiling and his future based off what we're seeing so far and the steps that he's taken um, and watching how he's evolved even from Borg to where he's at now. Um, I, I, I'm thrilled for it. I'm excited. But for him, it's about, hey, like, this, is a new, this is a new thing. And with, with new things, um, there'll be some mistakes. There'll be some things that you have to grow through. And uh, we're going to support him through that. But uh, hopefully that answers both of those. I think I got them both there. <laughs> right, to piggyback on the last question, what are your thoughts about the global impact of the game of basketball, especially after we saw what happened during the, the Summer Olympics? I love it. I, I think it's great for the game. Um, you know, I, I know the league is always looking to expand and, and figure out ways to really globalize this game. And watching what we've done, um, you know, in the Olympics was, was fantastic. You know, like Team USA is, is a great team and watching, watching them, how they've over, overcome certain adversity throughout that process was really fun to see. And it was really cool to see some of our own guys there, right? Like Dyson, um, and the impact that he had at Team Australia and Bogey with Serbia, I mean, becoming the, the, the team's all-time leading scorer um, and hearing the stories of how he's galvanized that group and some of the leadership that he's taken on. You know, when when they lost that game, I think all of us that were watching it, we felt that. Like, I felt it through the screen. Um, and, you know, we, we showered him with a ton of support afterwards. Just like, man, you, you just embody a lot of what we really value here. And we know that who you are and the approach and work ethic that you have and the tenacity and competitiveness that you play with is, is only going to translate into this season. But uh, it's really fun to see and watch those guys. It's always, it's always cool when those guys get those opportunities and for us to watch them throughout those uh, Olympics. Uh, kind of piggybacking on a question about the Olympics. As you just mentioned, uh, we, we know pretty well here uh, the, 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 the impact and which Bogey has had not only in the locker room but you know on the roster for the Atlanta Hawks. But I think that increased on a global scale this year. And some of his NBA competitors now see just, just how gifted he is. Um, have you talked to him about maybe an increased role or, or doing a little more this year for the Hawks? Um, I haven't spoken with him about any increased role. I think what he does for us is great. Um, I know there's areas in which he wants to continue to develop and, uh, and grow. And, you know, even talking with him since he's been back, some of the things that he shared with me in terms of his leadership um, have been really cool to hear and see. But where he's at, like, he's a fantastic player. Uh, and for what he's done for us, doing for us, and will do for us is really important. And I think he's in a great role. And, you know, for Coach and his staff, you know, they'll put guys in roles to make them successful for us. Uh, I know Nicole is not under contract yet, but a guy you drafted this summer. What do you expect that situation to look like? I know he's still banged up too, but what's the latest on uh, his status? Yeah, still trying to get him healthy. Um, looking at a few different options for him and, um, you know, likely, likely a stash opportunity for us. And uh, I think that's probably where we'll see him go. Over the summer, uh, V was a free agent. You brought him back. I was just wondering what sort of went into that uh, decision and what sort of role you envisioned for him. So, if, when I talk about our brand of basketball, if you watch Veet, um, he really embodies a ton of that. And what he's done from the time he's gotten to the league to where he ended last year, I think he's made huge strides. Um, the development that he's had, how he approaches the game, how he's for his teammates, and like that's something that you want around, regardless of playing time. Um, for us, it was really important to make sure that we got him 
back with us because of all of that. And the more that we have of that, I think that's the, that's the cultural piece that we're looking for, and he fits that very well. So not sure what it'll look like from a lineup standpoint um, just yet, but I know that we've been in conversations with, with Coach uh, and his staff on some of that stuff, so we'll see where that falls.